Okay, so this is going to be a video on how to build a mesh for FLAC, for a FLAC analysis, for a seismic analysis of an embankment dam. So here's the geometry that we're going to create, and the way that we're going to do it is we're going to build it using the graphical interface, so the geek is called, and then um, in the virtual space, and then we'll get the commands, we'll echo to the record pane, and we'll take those commands, and we'll put them into a notepad++ file, which can be read in later. So this is what we're going to build. 1,000 feet high crest. The toes are at 980 feet. And it's uh, the x is 70 over here, and the x is negative 60 over here. So the first step is to open up flag and you want to hit this is demonstration mode so this will we we'll hit continue right here and what is meant by demonstration mode is that we can build a model that is 600 elements or less well you can build a model of any size and then and they're called flak zones but I refer to them as elements so we're gonna if there's 600 elements or less you can run them you can simulate them you can run through steps with demonstration mode. If you have a, a model that's bigger than that, then you need a full FLAC version. So we, we don't have a project yet, so we're going to create a new one, and we're going to choose groundwater flow, dynamic, and adjust the total stress, and we're going to have extra 95 extra vi grid variables, and we're going to be using imperial foot slug. So really we don't, we don't need these because we're not going to run anything for this. We're just going to build a mesh. But you know, it's good practice to always have groundwater flow and dynamic on. So hit OK. It's going to ask us to save it. And we will save it in here. This is the project. Mesh building. OK. So the whole point of this is to get some flat commands to pop out that we can put in a notepad later. But we have to do the mouse action movement to get those commands. So what we'll first do is we'll go into um, generate. Wait, we're going to go to virtual. Not yet. Sorry, we're going to generate block. And this is going to generate two blocks in the I direction, which is like two columns and two blocks in the J direction, which is like two rows. And we're going to put our extents in. So if you remember, the left side extent is negative 60 feet, so we'll type that in. And the right side extent was 70 positive feet. And the minimum was at 970. And the maximum was 1,000 feet. So you can change these later, so it doesn't really matter. And so we're going to hit OK here. And this is what FLAC has automatically built for us. So if we choose this little icon here, show mouse coordinates, now down in the bottom left we can see that this is point is, is negative 60, 970 about. So that's where it should be. Okay. And um, these slightly darker green lines are where FLAC has automatically put some blocks in. So there's this top left what they call a block of elements and then it's the bottom left block in the bottom right and the bottom and the top right so flack has already automatically decided how many elements are going to be in these blocks but we're going to change that so what we need to do is now we go to edit in the edit stage um, whatever you whatever radio button up here controls what happens down here so we're in the blocks so this all these things here are about blocks. So you can see the four blocks more clearly now. If you go to mesh, now you can see the mesh, right? So first let's add a block before we change the mesh. And the way you add a block is that you take split blocks and we're gonna you can pick anywhere up here or over here. You press the left mouse. But we want those at a certain point. So that we're gonna put this at the top left upstream shoulder of the dam and this will be the top right upstream shoulder and so you can do that by hitting move points and then you come over here click left and now you can tell exactly where you want that so it's at negative um, 1.5 is the 
x coordinate and the y is a thousand so we will hit ok and see multi x was checked so all the x's in that line in this division line between blocks was moved to the left so here we're going to do the same thing right click and we're going to make this 1.5 and that's a thousand okay so now we have made a new block and it's the width of the top of the crust so if we go to mesh we can see that flack made some more elements for us in this block, but that's too skinny of elements, right? So what we need to do is we're gonna change the element size for every block. So instead of using automated zoning here, so we're in the mesh radio button, instead of using this, we're gonna uncollect that, and we're gonna do manual. So each red square, you can right click when you're over it, and it'll show you how many I or blocks there are in the I direction and how many are in the J. So the I is the number of columns, so there's 13 here, and there's J, there's three. One, two, three. So if we start down here in this bottom left block, we want, let's see, we want the number of I, the number of elements in the I direction to be 16, and then the J direction would be four. And you can see that what happened above is that automatically changed the number of eyes to the block above it to the same as the block that we just changed to 16. And you can also tell that over here to the block to the right of the one that we just modified just got changed to J of 4. Okay. So one other thing before we continue with this mesh. Oh, let's just finish the mesh. Okay, never mind. So up here we want I of 16 and we want a J of 10. And in these middle tube we have a lot of skinny elements so we're going to change this to an I of 1. One element thick and the J is going to be 10 still. Over here in the top right block we're going to have an I of 20 and a J of 20. No, I'm sorry, a J of 10. We won't change that. And here we're going to have an I of 20 and a J of 4. So it's already correct for us. Okay, so one other thing we need to make sure we do is we go back to blocks. And we're going to move the points on this block here. Okay, so this, the, this line is going to be coincide with the elevation of the toes, which we said was 980. So we'd right click on this one and we're going to change this to 980. But we could have done that over here too. Right, so we're going to go 980, hit OK, and it's moved down. So let's look at our mesh. So this is our mesh, and everything looks good. This is where we want to be. So the next step is to hit OK. OK, and now we are out of the edit mode, and we're still in the virtual mode. So what we're going to do next is hit execute. So right now nothing has shown up in this record pane um, because we are working in virtual mode. So if I hit execute then now in the record pane we see the commands that we just did using the mouse actions be echoed onto here. So each step that we did is now echoed here. And you can see uh, a new branch came up came up here so we could save that if we want we're not going to yet but what we will do is make a plot of this mesh so right now in the model space we can make another tab with another plot so we will do plot model and we'll name it mesh with grid points and element numbers okay and we will hit grid, or we can hit that here. We can find that in here. Excuse, no, no, we'll just hit that one. Okay, and then we'll do uh, grid number and number, and we'll hit okay. And now if we zoom in to the top right, for example, we'll see that the element number, this top right is 3714, and the top grid point is 3815. Okay, so then we'll go back to the model. And what we want to do next is to 
start building the notepad file that will have the correct commands in it. So we already have the commands to make this rectangle. So we'll open up a blank notepad file and we're gonna copy just straight out of here and we'll get an error. This says something that's okay. We just hit okay. We press copy, go into here and we copy it. And you'll notice that these commands, set command and the configure commands are here because when we created this, it was a new uh, project, but we don't need that for our purposes because normally, oh, we do need the grid one, but not this set. So we will comment them out by using the semicolon, which flack anything to the right is just a comment and flack will ignore it. So what we really want are this, we want this grid command and this generate command. And if you look at this, you can figure out that each one of these generate commands is for one of the blocks, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and there were six blocks, and here's the x, y coordinates of those blocks, of the corner points, and here's the um, grid points for each block. Now also down here we have, for each block, every element was given the a soil model, and FLAC automatically chooses the elastic soil model, but we can just, we don't have to do the model elastic command for every single region. What we can do is just say model elastic and take away that, and this will make everything in the model, every element have the, mo the soil model of linear elastic, and that will be good enough for now. So remember we commented out these set commands and these config gw flow, etc. commands, because when we're going to take this code that we're creating and put it into a different file that will already will be a full analysis that will have this config and the set commands above our mesh creation commands, right? That's why we're commenting these, these out now. Okay, so this doesn't look like a dam yet. What do we need to do to make it look like a dam? So the first thing is to put in a ground surface line. So we're gonna do that by creating a table. And remember a table in FLAC, it's just a line of X, Y coordinates. So we're going to say, we're just gonna type it in. So table 15, table, every table has to have an ID number. And we're gonna put the coordinates of the ground surface. So the far left one was negative 60 comma 980. That was the xy coordinate of the far left end, and the coordinate of the downstream toe is negative 41.5, comma 980. The top left of the crest is negative 1.5, and then 1,000. And the downstream shoulder is 1.5, 1,000. And then the um, there was a bench on a downstream bench, so this downstream face goes to 21.5 and 990, and then it go the bench goes over 24, 990, and then the downstream toe is 44, 980, and the far right end of the model is 70, 980. So hopefully I got all of those right. We'll see, and you hit enter. Now, in order to see that table in this, so this this plot is just of the elements, but if we go to the model plot, met, the mesh is always showing in the model plot automatically. But we can also see our tables, and if you right click, you can see tables, and ask which ones, one through 10,000, yes, that includes 15, and then you hit refresh. So you can see 15 here, and now it looks a little bit more like a dam, right? Here's our ground surface. Okay, so. The next thing to do is we're going to generate this table. And when you generate the table, the grid points conform to the table lines. And so we use generate table 15. We hit enter. And now we're going to hit refresh. We can see how the elements changed. And what essentially what happened was FLAC created three different regions, region one, two, three. And now we can get rid of this entire region and this entire region by using the model null region command. So the way you, you go is so model null region, oops, 
region. And the model null region command assigns, technically it's assigning a soil model called null to this region. So which region? And the null soil model is just like a nothing soil model. So it basically mm, makes it disappear. So the region, we can do this by putting in next to this a and any element that exists in that region, right? So I always pick the top left. Let's, so let's see what that top left read, uh, element is. So 114, right? Okay, so I'm going to hit enter and then refresh, and that disappears. So we want this part, this one to disappear as well. So what's that element number? We'll come back in here and look. So it's 3714. So if you hit F3, it pops up the last command you gave and then we'll say 37 com 14 and we'll hit refresh it should be gone okay so now this is looking more like what we want to see okay so now the last step is to get our four commands here so our table command with an ID of 15 with the XY points generated that table nulled out the two regions above it we're going to copy those into this file. So we're going to put a little comment here, um, shape, mesh, and then we'll copy them in there. So now when we run this file, if we called this code in f through the command line, if we called the file in down here on a new um, project, then this mesh would automatically be created. 